a merry-go-round is initially at rest. Then a person with mass m running at a constant velocity v jumps onto and lands on the edge of the merry-go-round. The merry-go-round has a rotational inertia or moment of inertia of i and the radius of big R. Describe the subsequent motion of the merry-go-round. This is a collision problem. The person collides with the merry-go-round, then stick together. However, we cannot use conservation of momentum for this problem because there is a fixed axle right here. When a person jumps onto and lands on the merry-go-round, there would be a jolt on the axle. Because of this extra force from the jolt, the net force on the person merry-go-round system is not zero. Therefore, there is no momentum conservation. However, whatever extra force from the axle would produce zero torque because the lever arm is zero. Therefore, the net torque on the system is zero, so the person merry-go-round system's angular momentum is conserved. So the initial angular momentum equals to the final angular momentum. Initially, the merry-go-round is at rest, so no angular momentum. The running person has angular momentum, and this person running that way has an angular momentum that's in the counterclockwise direction. So initial angular momentum is counterclockwise, therefore the final angular momentum should also be the same amount and counterclockwise. Therefore, what is going to happen to the merry-go-round is that it's going to start rotating in a counterclockwise direction. Part B. Let's find that the final angular velocity of the merry-go-round. We will use the conservation of angular momentum. Initially, the running person is the one with the angular momentum. Since we can treat the person like a point mass, so the person's angular momentum will be I omega r perpendicular times mv or r perpendicular times momentum. And right now we have mass, we have velocity, so it's convenient to use the perpendicular r times the mv. And what is the distance between the line of motion and the axis? It is this perpendicular distance, which is the radius of the merry-go-round. So this is r. At the end, they stick together. So we have the rotational inertia of the merry-go-round plus the rotational inertia of the person. And they rotate together at the same final angular velocity. So we have r times mv equals to the rotational inertia of the merry-go-round is just i. The rotational inertia of the person, when the person lands right here, the person's uh, rotational inertia will be point mass m r squared. The distance between the point mass and the axis is r, big R. So the rotational inertia for the point mass m big R squared times the omega. And so we just have to divide by that on both sides. Then we have the final angular velocity, which is r times mv divided by i plus m r squared. What if the person, instead of running towards the edge of the merry-go-round, he runs towards the axle of the merry-go-round? What will happen when the person lands right here on the edge? Again, when the person lands, there will be a jolt at the axle. Therefore, the net force is not zero, so the momentum is not going to be conserved. However, the net torque is still zero, so we still have conservation of angular momentum. But this time, what is the initial angular momentum of the person? It is zero because the perpendicular r, the distance between the line of motion and the axis, is zero. Therefore, there's no initial angular momentum for the person nor for the merry-go-round. So this is zero. That means that the final angular momentum is also zero. 
So the merry-go-round is not going to rotate. Everything will just be at rest after the person lands on the merry-go-round.